142 naval ratings once again in place, looking immaculate, ready to draw this century-old gun carriage through the streets of central London. Major Andrew Stokes. The great funeral procession sets off from Westminster Abbey. The mournful beat of the music. And the Queen's final progress through the heart of London, the city of her birth, gets underway. State funeral on a scale not seen in Britain for 70 years since the funeral procession for King George VI in 1952. More than 3,000 military personnel taking part, along with representatives of civilian organizations. Session, which is along the Mall. We have representatives of Commonwealth countries and the armed forces, led by the Mounties, the Canadian Mounted Police.
the Mounties leading the way, along to Wellington Arch, flanked by Mounted Metropolitan Police, followed by contingent of those who've been recipients of the George Cross and Victoria Cross, and representatives of the Armed Forces of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and other Commonwealth countries. gun carriage passing the gates of New Palace Yard and the Palace of Westminster and the Houses of Parliament where of course Her Majesty attended on so many occasions for the state opening of Parliament and all of this happening under the steady gaze of Sir Winston Churchill dominating this part of Parliament Square Queen's first Prime Minister the young Queen who expressed her debt of gratitude to the older man for the guidance that he gave in those first few years of the reign. which includes foliage chosen for its symbolism. The kings had a very big hand in this. Rosemary for remembrance. Myrtle, the ancient symbol of a happy marriage. And it was cut from a plant that was grown from a sprig of myrtle in the wedding bouquet of Princess Elizabeth to Prince Philip back in 1947. And English oak, which symbolizes the strength of love.
along Whitehall where the Queen once described her joy when she mingled with the crowds on VE Day in 1945 and where throughout her years as sovereign she led the nation in November on Remembrance Sunday placing her wreath at the Cenotaph and pausing to remember those lost in conflicts in the service of their country. George's Fund for Sailors, the Soldiers' Charity, the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund, the Soldiers, Sailors and Air Force Association. taken past the cenotaph and veiled by her grandfather George V in 1920. of the building scale of this funeral procession. The head of the procession now, away down the mall, towards Buckingham Palace. The procession itself is a mile and a quarter long. Representatives here, the Royal Air Force, the Royal Navy, and the Army. Hundreds of representatives with arms reversed as a sign of mourning.
Queen Consort and Princess of Wales, George and Charlotte, in one of the cars following this procession. What a majestic sight. The sun has come out, making the colours so vibrant. On the Mall, looking up to Admiralty Arch, the scene, of course, every year of the happy event of the birthday parade, the Queen's parade on the official birthday. Today, it's an opportunity to escort Her Majesty one last time along the Mall and past a London home at Buckingham Palace. His Majesty the King leading the party of close family members. Ratings gently turning towards the entrance to horse guards and the narrow archway which will lead onto the parade ground. The Royal Company of Archers, one of the groups of royal bodyguards. God's Arch, which is still officially classed as the main entrance to the estate, including St. James's Palace and Buckingham Palace.
and on to the familiar expanse of Horse Guards Parade, where for decades, Her Majesty has attended the birthday parade in early June to mark her official birthday. For many, many years, of course, she would come on horseback. And later times, in a carriage, but devoted to the event itself and thoroughly enjoyed the music with an expert eye for detail. And she knew the parade, trooping the colour, better than anyone. golden orb surmounted by a cross to symbolize Christianity over the world. The scepter, monarch's symbol of fairness and justice. heading towards the guards' memorial and then gently turning to the right to head for the mound and that final approach to Buckingham Palace. circling around the great Queen Victoria Memorial. The Royal Air Force there played such an important part, of course, in the events of the 8th of September and later, bringing the Queen back to London from Scotland. The Queen's body was accompanied by the Princess Royal. The Royal Air Force flew her Majesty back to RAF Northolt. A sight that the late Queen would have been very touched by and is one of the drum horses. Drums draped in black. This one is called Apollo, one of the latest additions to the Royal Muse and the State Trumpeter. General commanding the Household Division, Major General Christopher Gicker, who is in charge of all the troops on parade today, thousands of them. The 
colorful uniform forms of the those in the procession behind the major general. The sovereign's escort, House of Cavalry, the Blues and Royals. about the colorful uniforms. They are the Perseverance and the Heralds and the Kings of Arms there in authority when it comes to heraldic matters. We saw them present at the Accession Council and at the State Opening of Parliament and other important events to do with the State and the Crown. Seen at Buckingham Palace as this procession stretches now from Constitution Hill all the way back to Horse Guards. The representatives of the Army and the Royal Air Force and the Navy, the band of the Irish Guards and the Welsh Guards, with this section of the parade. Session makes its way onto the mall. consort pointing out some of the elements of the procession to Prince George and Princess Charlotte with the Princess of Wales looking on Sussex and the Countess of Wessex. Yeah. 
Princesses, Beatrice and Eugene. back of this section, behind the king, we caught a glimpse there, there we are, of Duke of Sussex, the Princess Royal, and her husband, Vice Admiral Timothy Lawrence, Duke of York, Duke of Gloucester, Peter Phillips. So many memories, those taking part in this procession from the royal family. And there we are, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mother, who died 20 years ago. And King George VI, who died a relatively young man in his 50s. Back in 1952, of course, meaning that the Queen came to the throne at the age of 25. And no question that King George VI was responsible for shaping this remarkable reign that we've seen over the past 70 years. Because Queen Elizabeth II has reigned very much within the parameters set for her by her father. A very close bond between them, as indeed there was between the Queen and her mother. mix of military heritage before our eyes. The Royal Marines, armed forces from the Commonwealth countries, the Household Cavalry, part of the procession to the heads of the armed forces. And we spoke this morning to Admiral Tony Radikin, who's the head of all the armed forces, and his hope that this procession would be impeccable and a fitting tribute to Her Late Majesty. And I don't think anyone would question that.
the drum horse and the state trumpeter. As they make their way gradually towards Wellington Arch and Hyde Park Corner. There we have the Commonwealth Memorial Gates with the flames. As we see the procession making its way towards this part of central London, which is near the gardens of Buckingham Palace. And what is normally a very busy section of Hyde Park Corner. Today it's solemn and silent with this funeral procession for the late Queen. The Honourable Artillery Company approaching, part of the great representation of the British Army in this procession. Flanking the Queen's coffin. On either side, we have the bearer party from the Queen's Company, 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards, and with the distinctive white plumes, the gentlemen at arms behind them, equally distinctive in their Tudor uniform, the yeoman of the guard. Scots Guards and Coldstream Guards. We have just about a view there of the Earl Marshal, gentleman in the glasses, uh, the Earl Marshal, Duke of Norfolk, the, the man who's in charge of the organization of state events, state funerals, coronations. It's a hereditary role. It's the 18th Duke of Norfolk. And uh, he's, he's the one who's shouldered a lot of the responsibility for making sure that this state funeral happens in accordance with Her Late Majesty's wishes. Center with the white plumes, we have the Major General commanding the Household Division, troops of the London District, Major General Christopher Geeker, who's in command of all the troops in procession today and elsewhere, lining the route and taking part not just in the procession itself. The great funeral marches, so familiar, of course, by Mendelssohn and Beethoven and Chopin.
this state gun carriage, which has been in the Navy's care since 1901, was first reserved for the funeral of Queen Victoria more than a century ago. It has been used since then. It was the same state gun carriage used for the funeral of King George VI 70 years ago. Regiments of foot guards, their distinctive tunics, Welsh, Irish, Scots and Grenadiers, and the Coldstream Guards. and the Royal Engineers, also in the procession. And this is the scene at Wellington Arch, which stands right in the middle of Hyde Park Corner. The ancient home of the Duke of Wellington nearby. And Wellington Arch named because of that connection. At one stage, the arch was planned as the main entrance to Buckingham Palace, but as with Marble Arch, things were changed at a later date. And this is where we will have a gathering of thousands of members of the armed forces for this final part of the ceremony in London where the Queen's coffin will be transferred from that gun carriage to the state hearse, which will be waiting to take the Queen home to Windsor. standing tall, just behind his father, the king, in the section of these young naval ratings. The Yeoman of the Guard, an important part of this procession, for reasons of tradition, and then the Royal Company of Archers, with their magnificent eagle feathers the King's bodyguard in Scotland. Deeply poignant moment in this procession. As Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II approaches Buckingham Palace for the last time.
on this fine September day with touches of blue at the sky, the London skyline looking glorious in the background. And here we have what is for the late Queen, a last glimpse of that famous balcony where she appeared on so many occasions, where she stood with her father and mother, the King and Queen at the end of the Second World War, cheered on by the vast crowds who were in the area we can see today. vast crowds again here when the young queen was crowned back in 1953. Just ahead of the naval ratings were drawing the carriage. A very poignant moment for them because members of the Queen's household, including her private secretary, part of this procession now passing Buckingham Palace, their place of work, of course, along with Windsor and other royal residences, but Buckingham Palace was always the, the office. And here we have the staff of the palace. great line of them standing in silence and respect as they wait for this procession to pass with the late queen. And we think here of the, the four memorable jubilees during the reign we look at that balcony and all the delight and joy and celebration of those times. Memories, of course, shared by the royal family and all of the royal household in today's procession and millions watching wherever they're watching around the world remember those occasions with equal joy. Session. We mentioned the royal bodyguards and the bearer party. Also there, the service equerries who have been part of the Queen's service.
leaving Buckingham Palace behind. And slowly advancing towards Hyde Park Corner and that transfer in readiness for the journey to Windsor, a journey by road. Contrast to the events of 70 years ago when George VI was taken in procession from Westminster Hall to Paddington Station. There was no service at Westminster Abbey. The service in full was at St. George's Chapel, Windsor. And King George made the journey from London to Windsor by train. And the Royal Train but arrangements this time are different. And the decision was made to take the Queen from London to Windsor by road in the state hearse. Procession passing just on the left there, the great gardens of Buckingham Palace where so many of those garden parties took place over the years, thousands of them, with so many people being delighted to be asked, just once in most cases, to enjoy the gardens and indeed if they were fortunate to have a few words with Her Majesty during the garden party itself. And then on the other side we have Green Park. Members of Her Majesty's household taking their part proudly in the procession. Still the sound of Big Ben tolling right across central London, punctuated with the sounds of the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery firing their long gun salute. And they've been based principally at Hyde Park for this firing today during this procession. Two guns also being fired at Hyde Park Corner, dismounted guns, as part of this last formal section of this procession today in London, before a separate procession takes place at Windsor later on.
lining the route in this part. Royal Air Force. Vice Chamberlain and the Treasurer of the Royal Household, part of this group representing those who served Her Majesty. scene that will touch the hearts of everyone watching, I'm sure, as we look at the close family, children of the big queen, led by the king, grandchildren, as they know full well that within minutes, it will be the moment for the, the late queen to leave London and to head back home to Windsor. London, of course, the city of the Queen's birth. And uh, we are just a matter of a few yards away here from the Queen's childhood home on Piccadilly. And not too far either from her birthplace in Mayfair. Magnificent view of Wellington Arch, with the greenery right in this busy part of London. And all the armed forces formed up for this final ceremony. Carriage will be taken under the arch. And from there, the transfer to the state hearse will take place.
so many elements of strong tradition worked into the procession today. Piping party from the Royal Navy will pipe the still when the transfer is about to happen from the, the gun carriage to the hearse. Piping party that we heard at the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral last year. A very strong echo of the Duke of Edinburgh's life at sea. And of course, from the Queen's point of view, a tribute to her late father, King George VI, and his experience during the First World War, the Battle of Jutland. A very challenging experience at sea. And of course, the Duke of Edinburgh himself with his wartime service in the Second World War. Crown and the orb and scepter will be part of the procession and that royal standard which is draped over the Queen's coffin all the way to Windsor until that final committal takes place in St George's Chapel. And when those emblems of Her Majesty's authority will be set on the altar at St. George's Chapel before the committal takes place. Under the arch they go. Her Majesty's coffin on that carriage to be sheltered under that arch. The transfer will take place.
moments that few of us will ever forget, I'm sure. National anthem played as Her Late Majesty was taken from Wellington Arch and is now on the way to Windsor. After a very moving service at the Abbey and some clearly expressed messages, including those of the Archbishop of Canterbury about the Queen's life of service and dedication and sense of duty. And then the magnificent, solemn, moving procession all the way from the Abbey to Wellington Arch. And there are crowds on the streets here approaching Knightsbridge, lots of them offering floral tributes, others just maintaining a dignified silence. Come to see their queen for the last time as she leaves London. Katie Nichol and Robert Hardman are still with me here in the studio looking at these scenes and have been watching the procession and the service before that. Katie, as we see the Queen's final departure from the capital, I suspect that these are the images that will stay with people for many years to come. I don't think anyone that watched that, he will ever forget it. Um, and you said during your commentary, so many memories, and that's what struck me as I watched that procession past those landmarks that have punctuated the Queen's life and punctuated ours, because we look forward to Trooping the Colour and those birthday parades. You know, I look at my life and it's been marked by the silver, the diamond, the gold, and all these wonderful jubilees. And I can't help but think back to the, to, to the Platinum Jubilee celebrations and the last time that the Queen stepped out on that balcony. And I think if anyone's wondering, what must she make of all of this? Remember when she stepped out for the last time, overwhelmed with emotion at that sea of faces, that sea of people there for her. Well, today they turned out again to bid a final farewell. They did, Robert, and uh, the sense of love and respect and admiration mm. um, is just as strong as the sense of loss. It is, Hugh. I, I thought it was rather touching. We saw just a, a few moments ago almost a ghost of a smile on the face of the king as, as, he, uh, as he saw the end of this extraordinary ceremony because it, you know, it's been a spectacular um, and, 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 as we said earlier, unprecedented um, uh, gathering of, of not just of world leaders but of all these uh, armed forces from around the world. Uh, this is a, a ceremony unlike anything, really, as you said earlier, since uh, the funeral of George VI, possibly since the coronation. And it's all gone exactly as the Queen would have wanted. She was, uh, she paid a great deal of attention to all of this, and uh, she would have been so pleased to see it just go the way it's gone. And, and, and I think the wonderful contrast between the solemnity and the formalities we had a little earlier, and now just look at the capital coming out. I mean, they are 20, 30, 40, 50 deep in places, the whole of Hyde Park, uh, and, and now, this is this is the sort of the, the, on, on her way to the to, to the other part of, of all of this, and which will be, I think, rather more intimate. Mm. Last night it was a glorious rainbow over London when we were um, preparing for today, and today it's it's a sunny day in September, and crowds really have come out in there many thousands and the sunshine has added to the sense of color and vibrancy um, it's been solid but not gloomy this is the issue um, because as so many people have said a life of 96 years is something to be celebrated um, of course 
the Queen will be missed, but people understand that there's a lot here that needs to be said about everything that was achieved over that long lifetime. And that's really why I think that people have wanted to come out. It's, it's a mark of thanks as well, not just of admiration. It's, it's saying thank you as well as farewell. It is you, and I suspect had it been pouring with rain, everyone that's standing out there today would still have done it in all weather. It would be very British. It would be terribly British, but I think the fact that as the coffin left the abbey and the clouds parted and the sun came down, it was, it was a wonderful moment to see that spectacle bathed in sunshine. And um, those rainbows that you point out, I think, struck so many people that the double rainbow over Buckingham Palace, the rainbow over Windsor Castle. I think we'll all be looking out for a rainbow later on today. Indeed we will. Um, and as you were saying, Robert, we're in a position where we are reflecting what's gone on today, but of course we're also looking ahead to the final part of this state funeral. Um, and these people are clearly out to say Goodbye and thank you for all you've done. They are, and here, here we see Her Late Majesty coming past the, the memorial to Prince Albert, that, that extraordinary memorial, 150 years old this year, uh, the Albert Memorial, which Queen Victoria spent so much love on. I mean, it makes you think, what on earth are we going to yes. put up to commemorate this, this, this extraordinary monarch yes. who is, is leaving the capital for the last time? But uh, you know, everything about today, there was a sort of timelessness to it, I thought. You saw all the, the troops massing in front of Wellington's old house at Hyde Park Corner. It sort of could have been the... 19th century. I mean, it, 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 and yet we have all these sort of modern aspects to it. It's, it's been a brilliant uh, blend of ancient and modern today. And there is 21st century Britain um, saluting, really, one of the greats. It's a wonderful parallel, isn't it, to be passing the Royal Albert Hall? Mm. Because, of course, all those years that the Queen was determined to attend the Festival of Remembrance. Mm. On Remembrance Weekend, the eve of the Remembrance Service at the Cenotaph, um, the buzz among 5,000 people mm. in that hall when she arrived at just before seven o'clock on Saturday evening was remarkable, um, with people really feeling that the Queen's authority and the Queen's blessing on what was happening was indispensable. It wasn't the same event, uh, and isn't the same event, won't be the same event without her, although, of course, the king will, hmm. uh, and already has impressed lots of people with the way that he's... Um, Everyone up. wanted an imprimatur of on course. these events. Of and, course. and wasn't it wonderful the way the procession took in almost every single, all the great memorials, yeah. mm. all the way through, not just the Cenotaph and mm. the Women at War, but up to Hyde yeah. Park Corner, there's the New Zealand War Memorial, the Australian War Memorial. I mean, every aspect yeah. of, of shared sacrifice, I think, has been recognised today through this exemplary procession. I was really struck as well, Katie, by the way in which the, the procession the initial procession, which arrived at the Abbey in silence, um, a sense of expectation, but deep respect. The service itself really did underline lots of the themes that Her Majesty wanted to have underlined. Um, she was, of course, a woman of strong faith. She, um, she and was. It yeah. had informed lots of the decisions that she'd made in her life and the way that she'd lived her life. I think, you, I think you're absolutely right, and we saw the faith reflected in that service, with some of her favourite hymns, yes. um, readings that date back to the coronation. There was Everything had been so carefully considered and thought out and, and punctuated with the most important things in her life, her faith, the armed forces, yes. her family, her people. It, it's, it's all there, and I think also that sense that, yes, we have lost something very, very special to all of us. This is a testimony to that. Mm -hmm. But in all of this, as Robert says, the tradition and the history and the landmarks and everything that's wrapped into this is the promise of the new. It's the continuity. Um, we, we, we've seen that in, in the past 11 days, extraordinary days, and, and how the, the new king has been welcomed. But we saw that in the procession with Prince George yes. and Princess Charlotte, yes. that promise of the future, that promise of what's next to come. And I think that's reassuring particularly at the moment, 
Yes. The presence of Princess Charlotte there, a reminder of some of the extraordinary changes that, this, that, the, that the late Queen made during her reign. I mean, it was only in 2011. She changed hundreds, thousands of years of, of male primogeniture so that, you know, the, the line of succession has changed. All these little, uh, that's so much. I mean, when historians look back on this reign, they'll see so many small ways in which very quietly but very firmly she completely transformed this institution and I also love the way today that the procession it wasn't it wasn't just about recognizing her I mean it was clearly it was but in her way when she organized it she wanted to recognize others I thought the way in which she placed the Victoria Cross and the George Cross holders right at the at the front mm. of that that procession for example that was so her you know the George Cross the the great decoration yes. invented by her father at the yes. height of the war you yes. know all these little things there's a, lo a lot of nods I think to her parents mm. in that event. and to the Commonwealth oh, yeah. the Mounties I mean Mounties, it was yeah. all there down to the to the NHS workers and yes. everyone that helped us through the pandemic most recent recipients of the George Cross of course the NHS a last word then from us before we go to our colleagues at Windsor uh, for the next uh, phase of the day um, and Katie you first of all um, it's impossible to start really assessing uh, neatly and credibly this remarkable reign so early on. Um, distinguished authors both, um, it's a challenge to do something like that. Do you feel that today will have helped people maybe turn the page to just realise that great change is happening yes. and that they can take that on board? Is today the day when people will be helped in that direction? I, I think so. I think this is the moment that, that completes 11 extraordinary days and um, you could plan and, and rehearse and dress rehearse and do it all over again. You couldn't predict how the public were going to respond, what the mood would be. Um, it's been phenomenal but this is closure today and I think back to what the Queen said in her very first broadcast when she was a little girl during the Blitz. All will be well because it will. Robert, is today the day when that happens because it's been 10 days of people really trying to come to terms with mm. such a momentous change in public life and in personal lives. I, I think what we've seen today, we have seen the embodiment of greatness from the, 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 all the world leaders gathered to what we're seeing now, an entire nation coming out. This is greatness in our time and that greatness is really down to this extraordinary monarch, her life shaped by three people in particular, her father, her darling father, her beloved mother, and of course, her beloved Philip. And I just think it is so powerful that here she is, she's on her way. And after all this grandeur and greatness, tonight she'll be reuni reunited with them for eternity. Well, we are looking at the progress of the procession of the state hearse um, to Windsor to the royal town of Windsor, where the final committal will take place a little later this afternoon, and our coverage continues. Uh, we will be following the journey, Queen's last journey out of London, uh, to her home at Windsor Castle, um, and then we'll be following the new procession that will take place at Windsor, and of course the service at St George's Chapel. And as we look at the vehicles making their way, and the status in particular, you can see the bright colours of the Royal Standard and the crown and the orb and sceptre telling everyone along the way that this is Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, a Christian of conviction who more than anyone understood the message of the preacher, which is that there is a time and season to all things, a time to be born and a time to die. The Queen understood that. It's part of the natural rhythm of life and the natural transition of the great constitution that she's upheld over many, many years. She's returning home to Windsor. Let's join Kirsty Young.